All right, it's time for a fun, quick, and easy craft this week, made mostly out of a one inch block of XPS foam. But it's small enough that it's gonna get you working with some media that you might have been nervous to work with in the past. We're gonna work with some green stuff, casting with some Hearst Arts molds, and even a little bit of wiring. We're gonna make these merchant benches this week on Tabletop Witchcraft. Hey there, and welcome back to Tabletop Witchcraft. This week, I felt like working on a fun, simple build that required us to remove foam from a block, not adding it. Well, for the most part. And the fun part about this is we're gonna have a lot of different media and a chance to work with a lot of different things, like green stuff, foliage, wiring, and more. If you're ready, let's go grab those supplies and let's get crafting. All right, we're gonna kick this video off with a simple two inch by two inch by one inch block of XPS foam. And that's how we're gonna start the basis for all of our workbenches. There's gonna be two different designs, one with an angle top and one more like a workbench with a flat top. Now, I was on Discord chatting with my patrons and I forgot to film that, but basically you're just gonna cut that at a little bit of an angle uh, right there. Now, a cool part here, we're gonna just cut everything out of one solid block of foam. We're not gonna be adding to it, so we're gonna add a little arch here for the legs of the table. And then we'll take an X-Acto knife here in a minute to cut out the area on the side. The neat thing with this build is it's so small that any imperfections, you can really take a little extra time to correct those and you really won't see them. And it's a really, really fun build. A little bit later on in the video, we're gonna get into all kinds of cool details with this. All right, so right now, we can pretty much just make any designs we want for the wood grain and texture going around this, trying to keep in mind how a table would pretty much be constructed, right? So right now I'm trying to make these big, deeper lines, I guess, with the X-Acto knife that'll be cut out, and I'll use a pen here in a few minutes to really exaggerate those lines. These two squares, obviously for the angle top of this little stand, I'm gonna just cut those out. You've seen me do this here on the channel quite a bit, scoring out foam and then popping those little blocks out with a clay sculpting tool. Now for the more defined details, like right here, we're gonna put some smaller cuts in with the X-Acto knife to add the grain. You can see the other lines that we put in earlier are much deeper and using the pen, we can really define it to make it look like these are separate slabs of wood. Now for added detail, we can cut out a few little chunks out of the bottom, like the benches have been chipped and just work your way around the whole thing however you see fit, adding knots and stuff like that along the way. And you can see the difference between the uh, indentation that I use with the pen and just the X-Acto knife. Now all the tables we're gonna leave plain. We're not gonna do this step except for one because here I wanna do a little bit of wiring. I'll put a link up above to a video that shows you how to make this lantern in my haunted house. And basically, uh, we're going to have the wiring come out the bottom of the lantern instead of the top in that video. Super, super easy, the wiring. It is not hard to do. It's something that I didn't do early on in this channel, but uh, I'm very happy that I got into it because it's a very fun part of the craft. Now, that little black piece right there was a switch that I'm going to glue into the top of the table slab. And I'm just cutting and gouging this little piece out here to allow room for the wiring once we're done. Okay, now this is a cast piece that I made from a Hearst Arts mold, and it's a little bedroll. We're gonna be sneaky, and we're gonna have this be the on-off switch for the lantern that's on the table. So all I did was just cut out with an X-Acto uh, a spot underneath that the little switch can fit on. All right, now as we did before, we're gonna just cut out a piece here that would fit a CR2032 battery, and this is going to be on the bottom portion of the table. And you wanna make sure that the battery actually recesses just a little bit more than that. Now, we gotta add magnets, obviously, right? Tabletop witchcraft video. So we're gonna add a magnet. You only need one, and that's what's gonna hold the top portion of the table together once we're done. All 
Okay, and then obviously we need to add the second magnet to the other side just to keep it in place. This one's a little tricky. You can see it's a very thin piece of foam, but you can do it nice and easy and you won't pop through on the other side. Now we have that setting. We're gonna set that aside for a minute. I wanted to make an herb stand, so that's what we're doing right here. Again, one piece of foam for the uh, post and the beam support over the top. And we're just gonna glue that right into place uh, right here. Now to hang some herbs later on, we're gonna put some in the stand, but we're also gonna hang some from these little posts. I'm just using some toothpicks and hot gluing them right into place. Now here's the paint scheme for the wood. You can follow this along. Obviously I did a little black Mod Podge uh, to the craft just to kind of sturdy it up a little bit. Once we're done here, we'll hit it up with a wash and then another light dry brush of that bottom right color. I believe it's a country gray. All right, now onto the wiring. We're gonna add a switch. I'm gonna put a link up above that actually has a really nice diagram and it takes you step by step and shows you how to do this. So don't get overwhelmed. Check that video out here um, after you've watched this one. But again, it is super, super easy to just pretty much wire in that switch right there. And then we'll just hot glue that right into place. All right, now this little tool is absolutely amazing for stripping wire. And I learned something here. <laughs> you do not want to try and strip that much wire all at once. You want to take it bit by bit and piece by piece uh, and working your way all the way back to the end. Because if you don't, that is going to happen. <laughs> um, yeah, I pretty much just ripped the wire right out of that. And I had to pull that yellow off, melt up that solder, and put another one on. So just do it piece by piece, all right? Once you've got that in place, take a paintbrush or something small in diameter and wrap a whole bunch of that wire around in a circle. You pretty much want to make a nice coil, not super tight, and you want to do that to the purple wire and to the green wire as well. You'll see why here in just a minute. All right, now that we got those two coils, we got a ton of contact space for our CR2032 battery. We're going to slide that right into place. It might be a little tricky because we got that magnet in there. But as you can see, it's just going to take a second or two to get that in place. And then we never have to touch this again until that battery goes dead in a year or two. Okay, so we get that in place, slide it all in. That one magnet's going to hold everything in place. All right, now we'll set that aside for a minute. Now on to some sculpting. We're going to use some green stuff. And a really cool tip is to use a little bit of Windex on your workspace to work with the green stuff. It won't stick to your finger and it'll allow you to work with these petals. This actually took me quite a while to figure out a decent way of making this. These are gonna be little heads of cabbage for our vegetable stand for the market. So sticking the little blob of green stuff to your workbench, we can rip off little petals and just work yourself around the round ball which would actually be the head of cabbage here in just a few minutes. And we're gonna take that little round piece of green stuff and we're gonna place it on obviously the end of a toothpick. It's gonna to allow us to work with this really well. And you can see it's gonna get a little sticky. Just keep applying the Windex and don't worry about it, you know, not looking perfect. You can take a uh, toothpick and really sculpt the leaves, put some folds and bends in them, just like you'd see on an actual head of cabbage. Pull up some pictures from online to use those as a reference while you're making these. All right, another really cool tip, some duct tape on a block of wood is super sticky when you have to place a bunch of cast pieces on it. Here they are all painted up. It's a great surface for painting everything all at once. So I really recommend doing that. All right, now we can start adding stuff to our tables. Here's that bedroll, a tiny bit of hot glue on the tip of that switch and we can add that right into place. And I just added, this is gonna be more like a um, adventurer's table, right? Where you're selling a lantern, a bedroll, all that kind of cool stuff, some chain. And we're just gonna use a little bit of tacky glue to hold this down in place. 
And don't worry about if you can see some of that tacky glue, that's gonna clear up real quick uh, once that cures. You won't see any of it. All right, now on to our vegetable stand. Super easy. Now we're just gonna take this little pair of snips and cut all the heads of cabbage off the uh, toothpicks and make sure to save those. You can still use the other half of them. All right, now I had no idea what I was gonna do with this. I was actually cleaning out my daughter's bedroom probably a month or two ago. I found these, decided to keep them. I'm happy I did. It looks like caviar, but these are gonna be our apples or tomatoes or whatever you wanna make them in your stand. You know, it really is important to kind of save little things like this from time to time. And as crafters, that's what we like to do anyway, right? Hoard all this kind of stuff. So I painted these up to look like tomatoes, a little dry brush with some white over them, and then some Reichland Flesh Shade wash over them, uh, and we're good to go. Now tomatoes or apples are gonna be shiny, along with the cabbage. So I'm using some Vallejo gloss varnish, and that really makes them stand out from the, uh, the wood table. Okay, the next vendor, I wanted him to be able to sell gems, have a lot of money, and I thought it'd be really cool to have a scale. And I almost took a spare scale from a second copy of my original Hero Quest that I have, but I figured, what the heck, let's just make one. So it's a real delicate piece. That's some cooking twine that I unraveled. Again, you can see those big blobs of glue don't worry about it those will disappear once it dries it really flattens out nice so I made that out of just some stuff I found from a hobby store some foam and then we put a few gems on there a little gold pile that was a cast piece from a Hearst Arts mold and then uh, here's my scale that I made all painted up and we'll just stick that right in place with a q-tip or actually yeah yeah a toothpick All right, next we're back onto some cast pieces from some Hearst Arts molds. I've got a bunch of books here, and I also had some gems. Now, the gems are kind of big, but you know I really kind of just wanted to use them here, so that's what I'm going for. We'll stick those right in place, and I'm back onto that Vallejo gloss varnish for the gems and the gold pile. Okay, now we got the herb stand. This was a lot of fun for me to do this one. I just took a bunch of grass tufts, some poppy plants, and you know a bunch of different plants that I had laying around, and uh, just tried to imagine what you know a full uh, display of vegetables or herbs might look like, right, uh, in a stand like this. So I just took every different color that I could find and had, and placed them in here, and then I took some. You've seen this on my channel, probably in two or three videos now. Uh, this is just some plants that I found while I was on a hike with my family. And uh, I'm going to use those along with some other stuff that was sent in by a viewer to really deck out this herb stand. And uh, that one's going to be all set and ready to go as well. And just take your time wrapping the twine around those little pegs and you're all set. Okay, so I hope you give this craft a shot. It's really gonna give you the opportunity to work with some new media in small doses. And you know, if you mess up, it's not a big deal. You can set it aside and you know, try it again. Because again, it's a really small, quick, and easy build. This build right here can be used in a bunch of different applications, like tables in a manor, vendors on the street, even in, let's say, a medieval merchant stand. Hmm, that sounds pretty cool, huh? Let's say you might see that here on the channel in the near future. If you liked the video, please hit the like button, comment, and subscribe. And don't be afraid to head on over to Patreon and check those tiers out there to offer some additional support to the channel. I've got a lot of tiers, and any support you can give, I'd really appreciate it. All right, until next time, I'll see you around.